here we are back on the variable HT power supply for reforming capacitors. This is part two. The reason I'm making part two is I've first of all I made a mistake. I went and said the power supply is less than a milliamp uh, that you will need. Well that was a mistake. It's, it's less than 10 milliamps I should have said. Um, I've got a little milliameter here, 0 to 10 mils and um, this one at the moment is reading 7 milliamps. I don't know why I said less than one, I knew it was less than 10, it's old age. I've also put in a rotary switch uh, there, your HT off, um, a f that switches in a four, 470k resistor, 220k and 47k. I found that, uh, the, yeah the first position is HT off, I found that the 470k was a bit high and I'm finding that the 47k is about right. I've put a couple of little wander sockets at the back there. That's to to read the the voltage from the power supply itself because the two terminals on the side are after the series resistor. So when I set the power supply volts I put a meter into those two. I've Whether this is a good idea or not I don't know. I've ordered on eBay <laughs> from Hong Kong no less, a little digital readout 0 to 500 volt DC voltmeter. It's only a little thing, you've got to stick on the front. I like the analog meters but I haven't got one. Um, yeah, I want a decent analog voltmeter on the front but there we are, I haven't got one. Um, and it, it doesn't matter too much. I think this thing was less than a fiver, four pounds something. Um, probably take years to arrive from Hong Kong but uh, no, having said that I've had stuff within a week or so week week and a half from there so um, when that turns up I'll let you know I'm just going to stick that on there it needs between 9 and 12 volts to run it so I'm gonna have to make a little uh, don't know, probably I don't know I'll make some little power supply in there to run so you know, when you turn the mains on here the little voltmeter comes on as well something like that uh, hopefully I'll find a decent analog meter. So yes, uh, also with these series resistors having them switched like that you can start off with the highest value, the 470k, um, wind your voltage up uh, on the, you know, the variable voltage control. Uh, if you've got a little ammeter, milliammeter, you can see what's going on there, check your voltages. I want all the metering really on the panel as I said but um, so that's it, this isn't really a part two, this is a kind of appendix is it called? Yeah that would do, appendix. Um, so yes, also uh, someone pointed out there are semiconductor devices that you can use instead of a valve. I know that, I'm aware of that. I like valves, uh, they are far more forgiving than semiconductor devices um, and also because uh, vintage valve radios obviously you know, by their very nature use valves, valve, vintage valve radios would use valves wouldn't they? Um, <laughs> dear me, whatever next. Um, I just like valves, it's all in keeping with what we're doing. Um, I might even fit on here instead of the four uh, silicon diodes, those rectifiers, I might even I don't know, put a, a couple of full wave valve rectifiers there. And make a bridge out of them. I don't know, probably won't get round to that. So there we are, that's it. That's the, yes, so as I say, the modifications are a rotary switch on the front. Um, yeah, use whatever you like. I found a four position one, so I've got off, uh, 470k, 220k, and 47k switches in the various series resistors. I put two little sockets on the back there for metering um, and. I think that's about it. Yes, if you use a 47k series resistor, it will need to be a wire wound 5 watt. Um, the little one I was using, it burnt up in the end. <laughs> and uh, you will notice saying live. Okay, so you can stick that near your capacitor so you don't lean on it. Just, just a couple more things before I end the video. Um, the capacitor I was reforming is now in the bin. You know I said it was about 7 milliamps or whatever it was. I thought that was high, I thought that's a lot for a capacitor. It's uh, a knack of one. I've now got one, two, three, four, I've got five in parallel. 
they've been on what getting on for an hour and it's just about one milliamp just under a milliamp check the voltage yeah that's okay so yes uh, as I said my meter little milliameters uh, 0 to 10 milliamps DC which seems to be ideal when you first switch on you'll have quite a high current you know it'll go up to almost 10 milliamps then it'll drop back very very quickly so that's that um, keep an eye on the voltage on the, the you know your variable voltage keep an eye on that these are rated at 275 volts I'm trying to keep the power supply voltage at 275 in fact it's now two it's gone up 280 something Let me wind it down keep it I'm trying to keep this at about 260 because um, as they reform the power supply voltage as the power supply isn't stabilized the voltage will creep up so keep an eye on that to be honest uh, these for example are from DAC 90A's the old Bush DAC 90A's they're rated at 275 volts DC working I think the HT and the DAC 90A is only about 170 odd anyway isn't it 180 so you know when I say you've got to reform a capacitor up to its working voltage like 275 that's true uh, but you can keep it down during the process towards the end when they're almost done wind it up get the 275 on it I'm only saying that because it will creep up and you don't want it like creeping up to over 300 or something um, these rated at 275 you probably find that they'll take 280 290 anyway so that's that I think that's all yeah I think that's it so thanks for watching uh, as I say part two and uh, be careful, you've got HT everywhere, don't go and kill yourselves. So uh, thanks very much, bye bye.